Welcome to the new automation mindset where AI automation and integration come together. Successful automation is so much more than technology, it's a mindset. On this podcast, we're here to learn about this mindset from innovative leaders who actually practice it every single day. From Fortune 500 companies to the boldest startups, these leaders have reduced cost, crafted experience, and fueled growth with automation. They have transformed their companies and their careers. I'm your host, Marcus Zern, and as Chief Strategy Officer and part of the founding executive team at Workado, it is my mission to find these top innovators in AI, automation, and integration and share their journeys with all of you. You may notice that this show matches the title of the Wall Street Journal and USA Today best-selling book, The New Automation Mindset by our Workado CEO, Vijay Tella. You'll hear references to the key ideas of this book, the growth, process, and scale mindsets throughout the show. If you'd like to explore them further, be sure to check out the book in hard copy or on Kindle. Louise, welcome to uh, to the podcast. Uh, really excited, actually, to have you here. Uh, you are right now the CTO at Zurich Pharma, and then we met back in nine, uh, 2019 uh, when you were the head of Grabber Technology Solutions, um, and uh, obviously using Workado at uh, at both. But maybe just to to tell the audience a little bit, uh, I, I would say you're a true man of the world. So I read on LinkedIn seven languages you speak. I think you've uh, you've been on every single continent. Maybe Australia is missing, but you know, uh, Latin America, uh, US, Middle East, uh, Europe, and now obviously Asia. So you've seen it all. Seen pretty much all industries. You know, GE like industrial. You've seen uh, banking. You know, with Grab, you saw the high growth. Uh, a kind of company, uh, Zulik Pharma, that's a distribution play. That's something new again. Um, so so that, there's a lot of experience here. And so I'm really, really excited, really excited uh, uh, to, to speak to you. The, you know, when we, um, when we talked a little bit before, I mean, we both read the, the new automation mindset book. I think we, uh, um, we kind of really rallied around the, the process mindset quite a bit. So talking talking today on the podcast, I think I want to make this a, a special focus on the on the on the process mindset. Um, and then I think the one thing that is also cool about you, I mean you when when I look at your journey, I mean it used to be that you had the CIO title and I think with the last two jobs you kind of avoided that CIO title. It uh, I think you describe yourself as a technology and digital a visionary and uh, and and so I think that we 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 all want to learn about what's what's behind that. Um, so so really really uh, uh, really great to start it off. So so may, maybe we'll start um, with your last two stints. They're they're quite different, right? Grab okay. and uh, <laughs> Zulik Pharma. Um, tell us a little bit. Maybe we'll start with Grab, where you started using Workado the first time. Tell us a little bit about Grab. Maybe for the audience here in the U.S. What is Grab? Maybe not everybody knows. And then tell us about your journey from uh, 2019 to, I think, like uh, spring of 2023, right? What happened mm -hmm. at, uh, at Grab and what did you do as coming in as the head of uh, Grabber Technology Solutions? What did you f see? Uh, what did you do? Uh, what did you learn? Yeah, look, uh, Marcus, first of all, uh, first, thank you very much for having me here. You know, I'm, I'm very excited. Had opportunity to be in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, great, great, great uh, event from my perspective. Um, sharing with you, you know, had opportunity to share with you, share with BJ, share with Amon here and the rest of the team. And I have seen also the journey, as you're talking journey, I have seen the journey of Workato when I met all of you in 2019 to, to what is uh, just, just a few days ago uh, with Amon and the team here in Singapore. Um, you know, one of the key messages or the key word, you know, uh, is process. You know, uh, you mentioned, and it's important to mention this very quickly because you mentioned my, my journey. You know, I have been, uh, you know, I, I'm from the previous century. <laughs> I was born in the 1970s. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting when you hear all these, these passwords. You know, we, 
Uh, I remember about, you know, two-tier architecture, three-tier architecture, client server, some of the first web applications, then the e-commerce bubble, and then the whole thing of transformation, then became digital transformation, then it became, you know, uh, RPA, then it became, you know, uh, we have uh, uh, AR, VR, uh, then digital transformation again, and then the cloud, the hybrid cloud, the super cloud, the whatever cloud, and now we're talking about the, the you know, uh, AI. And I always, you know, hear these buzzwords through my experience. My, you know, my first job was in 1990 uh, at university. You know, I was working with the National Science Foundations, man managing one of the internet nodes at that point in time. Uh, and when I see this, it's interesting. Uh, one key word for me is process, because no matter all these buzzwords that you heard all the time and you keep hearing all the time, you know, it's about process because there is no password that it will come with some technology of the moment that then it will make the process better. You know, garbage in, garbage out, but process New wrapper, still a bad process, maybe a more expensive bad process. So when I came at Grab, it was very interesting because Grab, you know, at that time, I will never forget my first conversation face-to-face -face with Hoi Ling Tan, co-founder. Uh, I had the pleasure to report into Hoi Ling Tan, into Anthony Tan, um, uh, both, you know, uh, CEO, CEO, and co-founders. Uh, I will never forget what she said to me is like, look, we're a privately owned company valued in 15 billion US dollars. It was not talk about the startup. It was not talk about tech company. It was talk about we are a $15 billion company, private company, and we need to be better. And of course, being a tech company, that was kind of interesting coming up before from Santander and other places. Uh, everything was tech. And in a technology company, the first shocking place for me was, for me was our first shocking thing for me was interesting saying to see, oh, we could build anything. Oh, CRM, oh, we could build a Salesforce. Uh, you know, Oracle, we could build an Oracle. Uh, you know, identity, we could build identity. Workato, we could build Workato. We like, could do anything, everything or whatever you could imagine. And, and that was the, the first shocking thing, kind of saying, okay, what is core, what is not core? What we should focus, where we should go outside and get not the best of breed, because that was the other thing. Let's get the bleeding edge. And I'm like, no, we're going to get the bleeding edge. We're probably going to be bleeding quite a bit. Let's get something that is mature, that we know it works, and it's going to take us to the next level. So for me, it was really process. And I will never forget, three months in my job <laughs> was the seven-year anniversary of Grab. We are at the Marina Bay Financial uh, Center. That was uh, at the 22nd floor. There were the offices of Grab. And in this place, normally, they will have the all hands. And the all hands normally will be every, every month. But in that place, you will not have more than 20, 30 people. However, this time, seven year anniversary, we have come back just from Vietnam from this big event called Grab Forward, which all the executives of Grab will get together to define vision, what we're gonna do, where we're gonna grow, the hyper grow talk, expansion, expansion, expansion. And I remember at that time, Anthony has shaved his head and donated because uh, Massasan had uh, from SoftBank have also donated some uh, uh, money from uh, cancer. So Anthony decided that he's going to shave his head and he's going to donate money. So we are at the uh, celebration. And I remember just walking around thinking about process because I'm looking people going around. And the first thing I ask, I say, hey, these wireless access points, um, have we tested them with more than 30 people? I get a blank look. Okay. Then um, what about if any of these wireless access points collapse? What's going to happen with the switches? How we test load, blank look. If something goes wrong, do we have a wire connection? Blank look. What's the backup plan? They're looking at me like, what are you what are you what are you asking? Process, process, process. Remember, I'm also a pilot, I'm a commercial pilot, and I'm when you before you fly, check, check, check. You go walk around, look at the plane, make sure, you know, pilot, copilot have a mission, you talk to the crew. There is a process. Anyway, we start, boom, there's about 300, 400 people. First five minutes, blah, 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 blah. Anthony comes and he looks like a mean Shaolin monk, man. He's completely bald. He's very fit, you know, all in black, wearing a grab, you know, jacket. Five minutes, boom, everything collapses. Just collapses, man. 
everything, seven year anniversary, seven, seven year anniversary collapses right at the moment that he was gonna cut cut the cake. <laughs> it collapses. No backup, no nothing. And I'm like, process. Uh, and that's something that took me through my career at Grab because I will never forget looking at, at Anthony. He's looking at me and he literally, time just froze. No matter how many people was there, it was really like a microsecond. It was just it was Anthony and me. And Anthony is looking at me like this Ming Shaolin that he's going to cut my head off. And he's just shaking his head. And then Hoi Lin comes and she goes, I know you just got here, but now you have on it. <laughs> so fix it. And then I remember right after that, I came back to the team. I say, process, how do you fly a plane? You do a checklist. How do you do this? Checklist. How do you get better at it? By being uncomfortable. And how do you being, become uncomfortable? By keep doing more and more and more and more until it became muscle memory. So from my sting of almost you know, four years of grab, every single all hand, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? We never had one outage. We never had any issue. And we just not for all hands, only the main, 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 you know, big events, you know, nothing happened. And that translated to then other things in which we focus in process, like, you know, grab, you know, think about it, the pandemic hit. So to, to people in the U.S., what grab is, think about Uber. I think so that would be the best description. You know, it's a ride hailing company, delivery, financial services, um, so, some uh, digital ads is the, the, the Uber of Southeast Asia. So it works in all Southeast Asia. You will not find over here. So that's, uh, you know, what Grab is. It's a pretty massive company. Uh, from this small startup uh, almost 12 years ago to this gigantic uh, technology company that um, it also the first digital bank in Southeast Asia. Uh, I was the one working with Grab that we got it approved. It was a historical event that, you know, there were five licenses and then one of those full banking licenses went to Grab. Uh, but again, all this was because there was a heavy focus on process, you know, coming from General Electric. And this is where I learned a lot. Uh, I learned one key thing. You know, I was very fortunate at one point in time to do in, two incredible uh, mentors. Uh, Gary Reiner. Gary Reiner was the global CIO of GE at the time. Dear friend. You know, I'm still, you know, very in touch with him. He's a General Atlantic now, an incredible mentor and, and guidance for me. And thanks to him, I also was able to connect to with uh, Mr. Welch. And I had the pleasure uh, of working with, uh, with, with Jack uh, for several occasions. And I learned one key thing from him, um, the theory of kiss. <laughs> Keep it simple, I would say silly in this case, you know, but actually, you know what it means. And the second thing was, you know, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, is a duck and it's about process. So taking that, coming to grab them, you know, pandemic hit, Overnight, Grab literally lost 97% of the business. What do we do now? How do we survive? And I remember being in this meeting with, with, uh, with Anthony, and he's looking at me, and he goes, hey, you manage Salesforce. That's what we use for the merchants. How do we make the process that is taken from onboarding that is several days to like one day? And when you look at our process, the first thing, and this is the other mentality set, even that the book talks about, when you talk about process, you tend to forget to say no. Because there's a no. It's like, let me look at the process and let me see how we can make it better. Uh, a few days later, we came back and we said, this is how we're going to do it. And we went, the onboarding that would take several days, almost a week, to one day. And that was a game changer for Grab. Uh, again, process, 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 process. Uh, then Grab decided to go public, you know. And in any normal event, any company will take about 12 to 15 months to go public. Uh, well, Grab uh, has this uh, view of we need to do, or they need to be hyper, 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 hyper warp speed. Uh, so instead of doing it in 12, 15 months, it was done on um, eight, eight and a half months. Uh, plus running the business, plus running operations, plus expanding, plus M&A, plus all sorts of other things. Uh, but again, how you could do all these things in the middle of chaos is with process. Uh, and then when you focus in process, you start to take the noise away <laughs> of all these passwords. Uh, so that was grab. That was, you know, it was a focus on initially uh, everybody as a tech company, we could do anything, everything or whatever you could imagine. Second component, it was, okay, now that we focus on process, what is core, what is not core? What should we buy? What should we build? Because there were things that, certain things that we needed to build. But then after that is sense of maturity, how you achieve maturity. 
uh, and maturity came from process. And, and it seems to me as though I, th I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, I did, uh, I'm dating myself as well. You know, my, my first job was also in the 90s, uh, BPR, Business Process Redesign. So I'm, you, I'm thinking you, of this. You, you know, we're young kids, man. We're young kids, man. We're young kids. Man. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, the funny, the funny thing is that in IT today, I mean, we definitely see this in Silicon Valley. Uh, it's basically about, oh, you got a, you got a problem. You got a, you have something to solve. And this is like, you know, go and buy an app for that. There's another app. And so you end up with, um, with like 50, 70, 90, 100 plus apps, all these little apps. Uh, and so I think what people tend to not do too much is actually think about is, okay, so where, okay, so what end-to-end -end process does, does that problem actually fit into? It's like, do I really need another app or do I just need to connect two apps that I already have? And I, I think you did some amazing work. I thought, you know, uh, taking a tool like Slack, right? Where you said like, hey, okay. if I have Slack and I have these apps and and I can do self-service for these employees that were growing from what? Like from 5,000 people to at the top, almost 15,000 people, I believe. At, uh, in like, uh, 20,000 20, 20, over 20, a period of less people. than two years. Yeah. So I think you 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 went to work and you said like okay I'll I'll use Slack people use that I'll have my apps I connect this wire this up and I create some self service. You want to talk about this a little bit because I think this <laughs> end to end process I think it really matters, right? Uh, you know you you make me laugh because I wish you know, the process would have been that simple. <laughs> uh, oh, it, it was um, it was it was an interesting experience. I remember that you know when I came to Grab, as I said, technology company. And it was very interesting that you have two categories, you know, uh, second class citizens and first class citizens. The first class citizens was the engineers, you know. So at that time, Grab probably when I came on board was about seven, eight thousand people. About 60, 65 percent were engineers. And then you have all the other operation or functional supports. And you had two, two apps that couldn't understand it. One was the Slack, the basic version of Slack for all the tech families. And you have uh, Facebook, I uh, forgot, forgot the name, uh, the other, you know, Facebook app. And I, I'm, like, I'm like, okay, so how do we talk to each other, guys? Because the tech families will say, I remember I'm talking with a group CTO, Mark Porter, dear friend of mine. You know, he became the uh, group CTO of Mongo. And he's now in another, some great initiatives. Another incredible mentor and great individual that... Also, key thing of why we partnered and became such a great friends was one key word, process. And this is very important to this, to this topic. Because I remember coming aboard and I asked the question, why are we having, I asked the question in my first QBR, and Koi Lee is there, Anthony is there. It was, I'm laughing because it was just actually, at the moment it was not funny, now it's funny. Uh, and I asked, why we have two apps? Why do we use the Facebook thing, Facebook thing, with all the respect, it was Facebook at the time. It was not Meta, so please don't get offended. Um, and then we have Slack. We are a tech company. Should we use using Slack? And a very, very senior leader looked at me and said, over my dead body, you will get rid of Facebook. A workplace, work, workplace chat, workplace chat. And I'm looking at the person and I'm going, I don't want you dead. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a nap. It's just a nap. So anyway, I remember going, this is going to go in circles, and this is going to be detrimental to my career here at Grab. I remember talking to Anthony, and Anthony is like, go talk to Mark. It's between you and him. You go figure out. I'm like, okay, great. Thank you very much. Go to Mark, and I'm like, Mark, look, let's talk about process. How we could have two platforms. People are not talking to each other. And then on top of it, we're asking them, very simple example, workday, go request leave. Have you actually one request leave to go uh, to workday and request leave between going to the platform, this, that, that. It will be like about for me to request leave, almost like about 22 clicks. And then it sends a message to my manager to say, hey, Luis is requesting, you know, a leave. So my manager has to do another 10, 12 clicks, but we're all busy. And he gets an email. He doesn't get the email, a message through either a Slack or work, of workplace chat because they're two different platforms. They're not connected to each other. 
So what do we do? Uh, and then it's like, okay, let's look at the process. And I remember Mark says like, look, I will support you 100% Slack, we go there, but it's on you, brother, you go figure out. I'm like, okay, this is fantastic. Thank you so much, I just got here and everything is on me. Uh, and one of the key things, I took that example of work in, and I said, okay, what we will do, can we do something like this? Because we have workplace chat and we have Slack. We need to execute operations, not just chat, but actually execute tasks. Can I execute this task with the Facebook platform? No, I cannot. Can I execute this with the Slack? Oh yeah, there's a connector. But the connector wasn't working that great. And then the conversation started with, with, uh, with Workato. Hey, can we put an orchestration layer in the middle that doesn't matter the front end, doesn't matter the back end. I just go, since I have a very young population that you know, what they're used to is with the WeChats, the WhatsApps, they do all these things with the two fingers. Can I emulate that concept for the perspective of leave? Oh, yes, we can. Then the other component, again, from the perspective of process was like, wait a second, I have leave, don't I? Why my manager has to approve it? Why can I not just be informed that I'm taking the leave? I already have leave. If I have leave, the orchestration layer should go check, say, yeah, leave, go for it, and inform my manager. My manager could come send me a, can send me a message via Slack and say, hey, Luis, you know, remember that day we have this meeting, can you connect? So we look at the process internally with HR. Hey, why do we need to go through approvals? So I remember talking with uh, Qin Ying Ong, the head of uh, HR uh, at uh, Grab, and she's like, oh yeah, we, yeah, let's, let's take it out, done. That saved me like about five, six different clicks, done. And then we start to you know, go through the process and then we got a Mac app running and I am working with Workato. I remember Captain coming to Mark Porter and say, look, we show him, leave. What type of leave? Annual leave. And even we included when it was some exceptions like medical leave that you could upload the medical certificate. So he's looking at this thing and right away the light bulb went on. And he's like, hey, we could do a lot of these things with Datadog, with PagerDuty, with XYZ, that now he saw the process will work for him. So we went, did it. Then now we went back to the executive management team. We presented. And it was interesting because then the person that told me over my dead body, uh, the same person went, okay, but now you need to go talk to the CEO of Slack and get a big discount. If we don't get a big discount, we don't do it. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> so there was another different process talking with a CEO of Slack to get a big discount. And, and we did. To make the story short, um, it was interesting, the same person that said over my dead body, if we don't get a big discount, you will not get it done. Uh, it will never happen. This person in an all hands is the one that announced to all Grab that we're, we're, uh, Grab was unified everything on Slack. And he's the same person that then went to Facebook and the same in a big meeting with all the Facebook people say, if you don't do this, 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 I'm going to give the mandate to Luis to just go ahead and execute, you know, Slack. And I remember just sitting there going, I cannot believe this. Uh, but the most important thing is, I think so, that was one of the few times I became extremely popular <laughs> because when this person announced that we're going back to Slack, uh, I remember this, the, the workplace channels. I was a hero. <laughs> I think so, that was the last time that I was a hero. But, uh, uh, but process process was process, process, process. And you make, because think about the time you had a total of almost 35 clicks. Those 35 clicks went down literally to five commands. When you have an organization of 20,000 people that are requesting leave, talk about efficiency. And this is real. This is real numbers, real feelings. And when the pandemic hit, you know, just to, uh, to uh, the people in the United States, we had some really drastic measures in many countries in Southeast Asia. Vietnam, total shutdown. Uh, you know, uh, we have India, total shutdown. Or we had in Singapore, uh, you know, pre, still not that extreme, but it was not easy. Malaysia shut down. So these kind of things that we did with, with Slack, Workato, and their backends, even from the perspective of the super app, you know, the Grab app, using those same principles, it make a huge impact on the efficiency of the company, but also how the company was providing services 
to all Southeast Asia. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right. Well, Grab. So now you you got this high growth company, a lot of young people. You kind of get the efficiencies there that you can really scale the the people. Fast forward, you you went public, you put the process in, now you're at Zulik. So Zulik, I understand, is a little bit like, uh, you know, McKesson in the US. It's like a pharma distributor, but it's, it's different because you have to uh, serve local markets also. Uh, but tell me a little bit how your world changed. I mean, they're very different uh, companies, right? Um What 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 did you find at uh, at Zulik? And I mean, you you chose Workado again to help. But what's the what's the situation? What's the scenario there? How can how can process make a difference at uh, at Zulik? Uh, you know, one of the key things they're gonna say, you know, be careful what you do in life because karma does exist. Uh, through my career, you know, I have been heavily involved with SAP. With all the respect to SAP, please don't get offended, SAP. Uh, but SAP is, is a massive platform. And if you focus in the right processes, it just brings incredible functionality. But it's just, it's, it's a massive platform, you know. And uh, through my career, you know, at what was Anderson Consulting or GE or AIG or the, you know, I have always were involved with big implementations of SAP. And uh, they're painful. You know, just just the reality, they're painful. So when I went to grab, I finally say, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm running away from SAP. Uh, a little bit too soon to to talk because or to celebrate because grab actually when I'm uh, acquired this uh, uh, grocery store group in Malaysia called Ma uh, Jaya, SAP, but was a smaller component. So fast forward to to uh, to Zuli. Is one of the second largest implementations and more complex implementations of SAP in Asia and probably the world. So that already kind of like, be careful what you wish that you have done in the past because you're going to come back to hack you. So SAP is right back center in my face. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a good one. Uh, and it goes back to what process, what, what, why process is so important at, at uh, Zulik. Zulik, what do we do for a living? You know, um, we're in logistics and distributions for the big pharmaceutical companies in the, of the world into Asia. Uh, so clear example is the pandemic. Take uh, Singapore. When uh, Singapore was getting the first doses, this is like to December 2020, everybody was very excited. They're coming and everybody talking, you know, the Pfizer's, the Moderna's, the AstraZeneca's. These companies were just literally rocket scientists, how quickly they could come up with something so complex in months, something that it will take decades. Uh, and it's because of process and it's because of data. It's as simple as that. Uh, so who brought all this vaccine into this part of the world? Zuli, Zuli Pharma. Zuli Pharma is the one that took all that, brought it to all the countries in Southeast Asia, the Vietnams, the Thailands, the Singapore's. When they came here, they, you know, literally the plane landed, trucks or lorries went, took it to our distribution center right next to the airport. Uh, Zulik invested uh, an incredible amount of capital in setting up the infrastructure for cold chain because if you remember the initial vaccine, they were like very uh, susceptible to temperature. So you have to build all this incredible infrastructure and then at the same time distribute this. Uh, so not, you know, it may sound simple, say, oh, it's just moving boxes. Well, believe me, you become, as you start to get involved with this industry, you start to appreciate how difficult it is logistics and distribution for pharma um you know i'm many years ago you know i deviate my 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 nose i, I played polo and got hit by a ball and just kind of went that way and had to do surgery but i didn't do it so i i depend on this all the time and um you know now i have the appreciation because i actually saw it in hong kong i picked one of these and i saw the entire you know supply chain getting to the pharmacy that I went and I picked it up. So I realized it's not that simple. So process is extremely important because you need to be extremely efficient. How do you move these boxes? How do you put the products in the right place? How you pick, how you pack, how you send them out and how you get them to the hospital, the clinic, the pharmacy, and on top of it, the bill of materials just to make sure that your inventory is correct. And you have, you know, no one, two, three little boxes. It's a massive operation of distribution and logistics. So 
key thing, SAP, big back office operation, uh, heavily you know, driven by process. If you don't follow the process, uh, you will create a lot of uh, disruption and a lot of unwanted friction that it has a direct impact in how quickly you can deliver these things. Also, you need to be very mindful that uh, even though we're not a pharmaceutical company, we're in f a distribution for, for pharmaceuticals, there is a huge component of regulation that we need to be very mindful. Uh, on top of it, you're, we're putting you know, um, technology in the distribution centers. We're putting robots. So can you imagine putting a robot if you don't have the right process? Uh, it could be like the cartoons that the robot is just running around. And I actually saw it one time in Hong Kong, what will happen when a process breaks and what happens with the robot. Um, I actually had to reboot the robot myself. That was quite fun. And I got a blue screen. Uh, window, Windows 11. I was like, ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> uh, no offense to the providers of Windows 11, but it was an interesting one seeing a blue screen Windows 11 on a robot. I'm like, oh God, that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, so it's a very different, you know, situation in which process is part of the day to day. Process is part of the day to day, which at Grab was different. It was a tech company. We can do anything, everything, and whatever we want. We're a tech company. We could develop anything. You want SAP? We will do SAP. Come on, how far it can be? We're Grab. In the other hand, you have Zoli Pharma, which is an 100 year old company, privately owned, Swiss German, uh, with very big roots in Southeast Asia. Uh, very, you know, successful. People hardly know about Zoli Pharma, which, which is good because our business is a little bit tricky in the sense we need to be very mindful the distribution of medicines, vaccines, you know, drugs, things like that, and regulation. Process is, in, is part of the day today because that's how you work. Now, one thing is process and another thing is automation of process. You see, that's the thing. Because you could have a process, and I said at the beginning, you could have a process, but it could be a bad process. But you know what? But it's being ingrained on you and it's the only thing that you know. So you just keep doing it, 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 keep doing it. Keep doing it. You become comfortable and you just keep doing it. So you have markets that each one of them decided to implement certain way the SAP. So you have now an SAP with multiple personalities. You know, they may be John, but the last name is different. Um, so process is in place. Process is not optimal. Process are creating friction, even though that there is a process, they're creating friction. So then... You know, for me, the role coming here was unification of the organization, create of a, a technology family in which we all come together, no little packet, packets all over the place, and then focus in cost optimization and focus on optimization of processes in the sense of how do we lead, deliver things. In the past, you know, there were like uh, platforms B2B, uh, they were launched, but there was so much influence by each market when something, when I say market, this country, when it's something that you have these multiple platforms. Coming here is like, okay, we're going to have a process, but we're going to force the standardization. We're going to force automation of those processes. You know, how it could be that we have so many AR, you know, accounts receivable, accounts payable, GL. Come on, it's AR, it's AP, how complex it can be. So really consolidation and automation of that because... The more that we automize in this industry, it has a direct impact on the health of people. It has a direct impact on the health of people. You know, uh, I remember when I was going through the interview process, talking with the chairman of the, the, of the audit committee of the board. Uh, and, you know, he asked me, you know, how you summarize your career? And I said, impact. And at the end of our conversation, um, it was interesting. It was supposed to be a one-hour interview. It turned to be uh, six-hour interviews over a six-day period. Uh, but him and I became really good friends. Uh, but it was kind of interesting. Talk about process. Talk about process with, with him. Literally, process, 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 process. Um, he said, remember, the process that you optimize, you said one word, impact. How you can you imagine how much impact you can create in, on the health of people? And it really gets you thinking. And it got me back to this, my health. If I don't have this, I struggle big time. So, yeah, it's an impact on health. So we have gone and implement more processes and not no implement more processes, optimize all these processes in few ones, optimize them using platforms like Workato. Uh, we're doing uh, 
uh, one of the first marketplaces in Asia for logistics and distribution of pharma. We're using Workato as part of that uh, for our onboarding to simplify the onboarding process of, of uh, clients uh, and KYC. We also are looking into our procurement process. There are like too many processes. We're actually bringing Workato to help us to optimize that. Uh, and we're looking you know, at so many series as you have in logistics and distribution uh, to consolidate process, optimize them, ma make them simpler uh, in such a way that you know, the delivery, the distribution, the logistics is actually faster, believe it or not. So it seems to me like, uh, you know, Zulik Pharma could have picked someone for your job uh, who was like a lifer in uh, pharmaceutical distribution, right? But I think what they did is they kind of looked more like at someone who kind of looks at this with a fresh set of eyes and say like, hey, uh, you know, maybe it's not good if this all grows so organically and, and you know, adds all this complexity. How can we... How, how we can maybe use technology more efficiently is that is that a little bit I, I, because you know there's a it, it seems to me like in your space technology is becoming probably more important than ever before i i read about the uh, uh the counterfeit medicine right i mean you you're close to china and there is uh you know there's that problem with uh with drugs that might not be the drugs that they say they are um and it seems like you guys invested actually in that. You invested in some technology uh, to deal with that problem. And then I guess you had to also then look at, you know, how can I, how can I maybe, maybe bring experience from other industries to, to uh, pharma distribution? Is that, is that, do I look at this the right way? Yeah. I, you know, it comes about leadership, you know, leadership. And, and as I said to you, I've been very fortunate in my career uh, that I could count, you know, four amazing mentors. Uh, I was very fortunate when I was at General Electric with, you know, Gary Reiner. He really took me under his wing. And where I am today is because, you know, him and my mother. Uh, my mother's another incredible mentor. Uh, another was Mr. Wells, Jack. He really took a kind eye on me. And for a whole 15, 16 months, I was running around and learn so much from him. So it's about leadership that they believe that technology can be a catalyst. Uh, when I was in AIG, I had the pleasure to be close to Mr. Ben Moshe, you know, when he came back to AIG, when AIG was having all these things. And I remember meeting him in Manila and looking, he looking at me and say, Kit, why do you think Kit? I was like, okay, <laughs> Kit. Um, what do you think about this name Chartis? And I'm like, well, you know, everybody respects AIG. Chartis, everybody gets confused. You see, you see, we should see what we should hear what he says. And uh, and at Zulik, uh, is about leadership. Our our CEO, John Graham. Uh, John is a visionary. Uh, he has been in this industry uh, for many many years, but he has one key vision: that technology is a catalyst. Uh, so what he saw. Uh, is the opportunity of bringing technology not just as a cost, but technology as an efficiency and technology as something that can drive transformation, no digital transformation, transformation, something that it could be create cost efficiencies and optimizations and something that actually can create impact on the motto of Zulik, you know, make healthcare more affordable make healthcare more affordable. So he really saw that, sees that technology is that component that it will make this company greater than what it is. It's an amazing company already, has so much history. Uh, the people that have worked in there that have created an incredible ecosystem. But John is that, that you know, that, you know, pro that, that electric, proton that goes to the next level and creates light is John. John is the leadership that really has bring that mentality. And if I'm here is because of him, you know, he believe on, you know, this funny looking guy with a funny accent coming from these weird places has the understanding of technology, but the understanding of process and has been around. So has the understanding of, of culture uh, and bring him on board and let him be that, that, catalyst of transformation and evolution people talks change no it's evolution 
evolution. That's really what 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 is all about, and and it's because of him. You talk about counterfeit. You know, he's uh, uh, um, Zulik created this platform called EC Tracker, which uses blockchain protocol for the perspective of no repudiation and authenticity of these you know these medicines, these drugs. That's extremely important. Now he's being seen at a global level as a plurally is this a uh, group called the Pharma Ledger. They're actually looking at the platform to make it global. Uh, it's because of him. He had that vision. Uh, and he really decided in the sense of the investment that was needed and fought for the investment. Um, there are certain things that I've been doing in the past eight, nine months that he has been in the front really uh, driving and saying to the board and convincing the board, this is the right approach. We need to go this way. Uh, so it's because of leadership and somebody like John Graham. John is, is an incredible individual. He has the vision, the understanding, the know-how in the industry. And the other thing, John's also another uh, kind of those in, very similar to me from the perspective that he has traveled and, and worked all over the world. So he also has that vision of bringing components of different cultures and how we could make them all together and make something very unique. And, and, and tell me a little bit, I mean, maybe as an advice uh, uh, for the audience, I'm, I'm sure we have uh, CIOs online here. We have probably future CIOs online that are just curious to, to learn any, any advice that you have for them. So um, what I read about you as a, as a quote was really that at Grab, people thought that what you did is you, you changed the way IT was perceived at Grab. There was a there was a change. So what I'm what I'm trying to get to is like, you know, we have here online CIOs. We also have future CIOs, people who are, you know, working towards that goal. Do you have any advice what they should do, uh, what they maybe shouldn't do? Um, maybe also like, you know, what companies, if you want to be on that journey to become that technology leader, what, what companies are you looking for? Maybe what companies would you avoid because the environment isn't, isn't right? Any, any advice for folks, what you, what you learned in your career? And what, what are you, uh, what are you um, really looking for to be remembered uh, uh, at, uh, at, at these companies? Because, you know, I think there's all kinds of CIOs, maybe CIOs that people don't even know about in companies and there and there's other CIOs I think I would say like like yourself where people go like oh I think he he really changed the game or he really made a difference like what what can people do look especially nowadays you know as I said I'm, I'm I come from the whole world you know in the sense of you know last century and I have seen this evolution you know, cloud, well, that's the mainframe, man. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. We're talking about all these noise and all these things, all the bad passwords. You know, eight, eight, nine months ago, nobody was talking about chat GPT and Gen AI and AI and all that. Everything was the metaverse, the metaverse, you know, AR, VR, and then all of a sudden, all these, all, all these, all these wordings. And then all of a sudden, it seems like AI is gonna, gonna solve the world. But we, the best advice that I will give to anybody starting or in this journey, Get into the detail. Don't get caught in the password. Understand that the password is a password. What is behind that? What is actually what you need to create that or make a decision? AI is about data. It's simple as that, you know, data. What it means from the perspective of your data. Don't get caught in the sense of all these different companies coming. I will give you the X, the Y, the Z, and it will be implemented in no time, and tomorrow you will be a hundred points higher in your revenue. No, it takes time to evolve, you know, so get into the detail, understand, take the passwords out. Please don't talk the passwords, you know, because then, you know, you just become very shallow. You just very shallow. Don't go AI this, AI that, BR this, AR this, you know, go to the detail. Talk about, you want to talk about AI? Talk about data. What it means from the perspective of data. Is your data clean? Is your data ready? Is your environment of data ready? Get into that conversation and get into the detail. Don't get caught in all these passwords and be just 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 another soundbite. Because, you know, to your point, when you become a soundbite, nobody's going to remember you <laughs> because the soundbite keeps changing. Keeps changing. Be part of the evolution. Be part of that evolution. The, 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 the second thing that I will strongly recommend 
and I use this word. And just recently, you know, in December, I had a um, big party for a uh, quite sizable uh, group of my team in the Philippines. And just recently, we had the first you know, uh, call with all my heads of technology in all the markets and countries. And I use one word. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. That's my role. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. And comfortable has a bad connotation. You know, um, I exercise like crazy. I do MMA, I jump out of planes, I do crazy trainings and all that. And I push myself to the limit. It's like, you know, just yesterday I was with my trainer and he's like, so how, how much, how, how many deadlifts are we going to do today? Well, I don't know. We do like about 15 reps, five times. Okay. What's the weight in, in, in pounds? Uh, in kilograms, it's like 100, 140 pounds. That's over 300, uh, sorry, 140 kgs. That's over 300 pounds. Oh, let's do 15 times. Because I want to be uncomfortable. Because the more uncomfortable that I am, I get it. I understand the feelings, the pain, the process. And then when the, you know what hits the fan, because it will happen, like it happened during the pandemic when I was a graph, you know, that moment you don't react. You actually flow and understand how to put things together. Be uncomfortable. Make yourself uncomfortable. Physically, mentally, learn things that makes no sense to you. You mentioned seven languages. You know why I went and learned that? Because I wanted to be uncomfortable. So because I really said, I really will go and I feel stupid. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Why am I doing this? But really my brain, you know, I'm always confused, but my brain is start to see things in a different way. I was uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. Make yourself uncomfortable. And especially for the future, for the new CEO, CIO, CTOs, you know, get into the detail. Be uncomfortable. And please, you know, uh, read. Go read. Go read. You know, spend time reading. Don't just the quick article on the X platform, read, understand that, get some great books, start to educate yourself, not just about technology, but especially the other thing that is very important as our world is becoming now almost no boundaries, no borders, educate yourself in the geopolitical situation because it's going to have a direct impact on your career. Data residency, data privacy, guess what? Has a geopolitical implication. Decisions made by governments have a geopolitical implication. They have a direct impact on the technology landscape. So you see, it's not a change, it's an evolution. So go read, learn about the impact of society. Learn about history, you know, how history has, you know, shaped our technology even to today. Uh, those are the kind of things. And the last point that I will say, keep it simple, the theory of keys, the theory of keys. Keep it simple. If you cannot understand it, well, wait a second, take a step back, take 10 steps back, 20 steps back, look at the full, full board, and then make a decision. Don't rush to make a decision. Don't rush. Uh, you mentioned something, and this was with Mike Porter at, at, at Graph. You know, uh, before I came on board, the IT, and there's a big difference between IT and technology, with all due respect. IT is necessary, but IT is kind of like the triage, kind of like in the military, you have the mash units on the field that they go, somebody gets hurt, boom, 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 and then send them to the hospital and, and let them figure out. Technology is different. Technology is an enablement. And when I was a grab, I remember uh, the first thing that will happen, I will think will be, no, no, we're not going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. No, we're not going to do it. Uh, why? Because, you know, they were so busy all the time trying to put fires out. When I came on board, I remember I told, talked to the team and said, why do we have so many fires? Okay, if we have fires, let's get professionals to come and fix the fires once and for all. Done. And now we're going to think what we do. So with Mark was, hey, I never said no to him. I'm like, hmm, good idea. Give me three days. I will get back to you with uh, a road. Think about it. It's like flying. When you fly, you know, being a pilot, that's the other thing. You know, I take all these, you know, I do all these things. People say, come on, man, why do you do so many things? Because it makes me uncomfortable, it challenges me, and it makes me learn. Being a pilot, when you fly, I have a dear friend of mine. He's a pilot in Singapore Airlines, married with some dear friend of mine that she works at Meta. And we, we get together, and rather than talking technology with her, 
him and I start to talk about uh, control towers. What's the most beautiful control tower that we have seen? And we both agree the one in Istanbul is actually beautiful. But you know, you, you, you learn sort of say, nothing to do with technology, but believe it or not, there is a component of technology because then we start to think about what technology has been used in that control tower that is so amazing. Uh, so learn about other things. Tear of kiss, keep it simple, silly, and call it as it is. Don't be afraid of call it as it is. Even if your CEO says something, be yeah, be respectful. But you know, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, is a duck. Don't call it something else. That was the most valuable lesson that I, I, I got from uh, from uh, from Mr. Welch. He really forced me to like, okay, you need to be respectful if you don't agree, but don't just go to the motions, man, because there's gonna be consequences. Raise your hand and say, sorry. That's a dog. Why are you calling it a horse? You want to make it a horse? We could make it a horse. But these are the implications to make that dog a horse. You know, it's going to take time. Can it be done? Yeah. But it's going to take time. Uh, so those are the kind of things. Just, just you know, um, but the key thing is educate yourself. And it's not just about technology. It's about our, our, the world that we live in today. There's so many things. You look at the news. Look what's, look what's happening in the Middle East. I live in the Middle East. Look what has happened in Africa. I live in Africa. Look what's happening in Asia. You know, just recently I was in Taiwan. I, I see things. Uh, recently I was in Shanghai and I walk around Shanghai and I go, wow, man, this, this is impressive how the whole ecosystem is. You see what's going in Europe, you know. Um, when I was in AIG, I was running Russia and Ukraine. So I've been there and you kind of go, ooh, I know, where is this? So <clears throat> educate yourself about the world that you live in. And remember that it's not about change, it's about evolution. And don't get caught in the passwords. It's, it's the worst thing that you could do. It's just, you, you, you just, <clears throat> you know why? Because how people remember you is about substance. If you have no substance, uh, people don't even gonna who, who Luis who why, why, how many Luises are around who, Luis who <clears throat> but when you bring substance and you bring you know uh, yourself with reality people will remember you you know for me in my case when I go around or people goes around and talk about me the first thing that they will say Luis was that beep 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 <laughs> believe me <laughs> but then they will say he was a good ah uh, one <laughs> so. Uh, you know, that's that's how you well, want to be remember. That makes total sense. I mean, listen, this was uh, this was inspirational. I, I, I really do uh, I think so. I mean, I think you made this point. You know, a lot of IT today is firefighting, right? Get get proactive. I think you made the point like very succinctly. Um, you got to be curious, and you have to. I think you 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 explained how you built these relationship with uh, with the the other leaders the ceo the you know the co-founders and so on because i think you want to be a proactive participant in that circle you don't want to be that uh, it leader that just fire uh, fights the the fires you want to be proactive in and i think maybe just to uh, finish this off here i think process is a really good mechanism because these people that if you talk about the business processes i think i think you will be interesting to these other leaders if you if you talk about uh, this app and that app and 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 so on i don't think you will be um so listen luis we've um, we've talked like an hour here I, i'm sure we could talk three more hours but i want to thank you I really want to thank you yeah, thank for you. spending the time here, uh, uh, giving like a really positive message. And you know, it's not it's not easy. I think being that technology leader, I I I, I want everyone also to to realize it's it takes work. <laughs> I mean, I think people have seen all the experience, all the effort you put in to to get where you are. It it it, it doesn't come for free. But uh, yeah, thank thank you for sharing the wisdom and uh, um, yeah. Uh, hope maybe we'll have you back for another episode to talk even more so so thank you Luis. uh appreciate it no thank you and one key thing please keep take care of your health take care of your health if you're not healthy you know uh everything else it just goes away so quickly so uh, one last comment take care of your health thank you thank you Luis. 
Thank you all so much for tuning into today's The New Automation Mindset, where AI automation and integration come together. If you want to learn more about the key topics we've covered in the show, you can find them in the book, The New Automation Mindset by our Workado CEO, Vijay Tella. Also, leave us a comment and let us know what you thought of today's conversations. And don't forget to subscribe so you will never miss an episode. I'll see you next time.